Ryan, how challenging was it to uh, watching the film of Monday, and and how much better can you you know how how easy will it be to bounce back from that? Uh, it'd definitely be easy to be a lot better than that. Um, you know, tough tough to watch that film. You know, I watched it I think five times over the Sunday Monday. Um, kind of went through everything multiple times and and looked at the areas where I can be better, where we can be better, and you know, I think we uh, we nailed those down and excited to uh, to move forward. Was it just one of those, like, for you, just an off game being with a lot of new pieces? Yeah, it definitely wasn't my best day, obviously. I think uh, there's no uh, no calls about that. I think uh, a lot of areas where I can be better, excited to uh, to be better in those areas this week. Do you feel like it was different from before? Whereas, like, it seemed like before you'll see it, let it rip immediately, but maybe this time, like, you weren't believing what you were seeing at times? Or what do you think is behind some of the, you know, the misreads or opportunities to throw the ball where you did? Uh, I don't necessarily think that that, that was it. Um, yep. I'm not going to get in and break down the whole game right here, but uh, definitely areas where I can be better for sure. So what are some of those areas? Huh? So what are some of those areas you want to be better? Um, every area where you, where you look like I could be better, then that's probably it. Did you, did you feel like a couple of sideline completions, normally that, that timing that we see with you, just didn't seem exactly right. Did you feel like the timing was just a, a little bit off on some of those? Yeah, no or? question. We have to be consistent in what we're doing out here on the practice field and then have it translate over to, to games. We can't um, have inconsistencies there, you know, across the board whenever we're, uh, we're on playing on Sundays, right? So um, just making sure that we take advantage of the reps in practice and then it matches up with what we're doing on Sundays. When you watched it, which was more concerning, the turnovers or the couple of plays where you missed guys that could have had big plays if the, if the catch is completed? Uh, you want to get it all fixed. I don't think that uh, – you look at any of it and are all right with it. You want to you want to go out and, and play good football, and that's what I aim to do this week. Are there plays where um, something when you're looking at it after the fact, and you see something that popped open on the backside where where you just weren't going to see that in the construct of the play, um, or, or what do you think? Like when you see that Burks is coverage completely broke down on on the one pick to hop. Yeah, there's there's certain areas where. Uh, reads where you're picking a side, picking a, a matchup, and you're not going to be able to see the other side of the field. Um, it sucks when that happens, right? Whenever you uh, are on the wrong side, but you know you see it happen across the league every week. You know, I'm watching, watching multiple games, and uh, and it happens, right? It's just part of part of uh, playing the game. Uh, feels good when you're on the right side, and then obviously sucks, you know, when it happens on the back side. There are other times when there was maybe a check down opposite what you were looking at that that maybe you could have gone to. <laughs> Man, you guys are trying to break down every play of the game, and there's a lot of areas where, um, you know, I want to be better and look forward to be better this week. Right, as you went through the film, uh, from a pers protection perspective, did you think that you guys figured some things out during the course of the game? You know, I thought those guys battled. You know, we did some good things, and then uh, obviously in some areas where we want to be better. But I thought those guys battled. We knew going in that they were a good front, strong front, and um, you know, be no different this week. Uh, obviously. With, with Bosa, with Mac, uh, some big guys inside. Um, a good secondary, right, that, that's very active. Um, got some length outside with 43 Davis. Um, JC Jackson obviously has had a, a good career so far and, and made a lot of big plays and got his hands on a lot of balls. Um, Derwin James uh, in the secondary, a guy who's uh, very active. He's, he's coming in a lot of pressures. He's, he's efficient and disruptive when he comes on those pressures uh, and obviously uh, has the range on the back end. So uh, you look at the defense as a whole and you see a, a very capable group uh, with talent all over. Well, Ryan, did you know prior to the fourth down field goal to make it 16-15, did you know on that third down that they were going to kick on fourth? No. So did you think you had two plays to get the first down? <laughs> Guys, I just want to move on to uh, San Diego. I'm not going to answer any more questions about what happened Sunday? What happened Sunday happened. Uh, I'm not happy about it. No one in this building's happy about it. But at the end of the day, it's over. We can learn from it. We can move on. And uh, if you have any questions about San Diego, I mean, sorry, LA, I'm more than happy to, uh, to answer. With that, as you turn the page toward, towards that, that game, I mean, it's one game that you had in this offense. Is it encouraging that? You know, you could get better knowing <laughs> more time you you have in the scheme. Yeah, no question. I mean, uh, that's the 
I guess the the bright spot is like you know uh, feel like it's got to be better from here, right? So um, want to attack this week, come out, you know, have a great week of practice, and, and be ready to go on Sunday. What's the like, I guess, with DeAndre, not only in game, but maybe like first after the first game, or you, as you guys continue to try to get on the, the same page, what's the film watching process like? Yeah, we got we got together on Monday and uh, with the receiving unit, and was able to to go through the tape and uh, kind of talk them through what I'm seeing and what I'm expecting on certain plays and, and make sure those things match up and, and match up consistently so that we can be effective and efficient moving forward. Brian, with your experience in this league, how have you grown in the mental process of exactly what you were saying about moving on and focusing on improving? Yeah, you have to, you know, see reality, but then also you, you can't dwell on things, whether positive or negative, you know, uh, whether you're coming off a great game or a uh, a game that wasn't your best, you have to be able to see things for what they were, see things that went well, what didn't go well, how can you be better, and then you know, take those things moving forward. Obviously, there's not a complete transfer from one season to the next, but is there any level of frustration that this team hasn't won in a while? Yeah, I mean, we play to win. Yeah, I mean, that's why we, we put in the hours, the, the blood, sweat, and tears, uh, countless, countless hours and sacrifices that, that we put in. Uh, to play this game, you know, so obviously we want to go out and want to win the game. Brian, not to, not to drag you back to the New Orleans game, but new offense, new coordinator. What did you make of the, the game plan and how Tim called the game in New Orleans? And then as you guys look forward to calling the game this week, uh, just how do you feel in the new offense with the new play caller? Yeah, you know, I think uh, I'm very confident in Tim and, and what he's done up until this point and excited to have another crack at it this week. Do you feel like you have the same confidence that you had in 2019 and 2020 when the offense was very successful now? Yeah, I'm totally confident in myself and my abilities and the guys around me. And I think that's what it comes down to is, is trusting yourself, trusting the guys around you, and then um, being able to make those plays when they come. Obviously, you know, some, uh, some room to improve from last week, but excited to attack those things this week and go out, execute the game plan, and play well on Sunday. Do you kind of want this game to come fast to get out there and – yeah, no question. You know, as soon as uh, as soon as I got on the bus, you know, I was texting uh, with Tim and just said, you know, Sunday can't come fast enough. Just want to get back out there, um, want to play again as soon as possible. But you know, have a, have some work to do in order to be prepared and be ready to go. But yeah, definitely want to uh, to get out there and have another opportunity. Forefront after Aaron's injury, I know you've talked in the past about preferring grass. What specifically is it about grass that you prefer compared to turf? It's just easier on your body. Um, you know, your joints, your skin, like all of it. You know, it's uh, turf's just kind of hard on you. They've had a lot of improvements over the years, but at the end of the day, it's just harder on your body all across the board. Do you have memories of the time turf was hard on your body that kind of stood out? Uh, every time you, you play on <laughs> turf, you know, you. You get in the shower after the game and you sting all over. Um, your joints hurt more the next day than they do after you play on grass. So um, that's kind of is what it is, though, right? There's a, a bunch of games, especially you know home games now, going to be played on turf. So um, it's a fast surface, right? There's some benefits for it. You feel fast when you're when you're on it. You move well. Uh, it's responsive, but at the at the same time, yeah, it's a little harder on your body. You guys played this team relatively recently last year. Um, you, you played most of that game. What from that performance can you take away looking to play them again this upcoming week? Yeah, we battled. You know, it was uh, not a pretty game. Uh, I was kind of hobbling on, on one foot for for most of the game. Um, but our guys battled. You know, we kept ourselves in it. Defense kept us in it. And then at the end of the game, we were able to, to drive down right when we needed to and and go uh, get get a touchdown, you know. So uh, did some good things, uh, but, you know, hope to be better this week. Thank you. Thank you, Ryan. Uh, Good morning, Mike. Hi. Uh, the NFL PA this morning kind of reissued uh, their, call, their call for all grass across the league. Uh, you played on grass and turf in your career. Now the league, your team is switching over to the turf. Is it just a more complicated situation sometimes than just, you know, uh, different stadiums, different locations, sometimes require different solutions? Yeah, I think it's all – you know, a case by case basis, having played in all different types of surfaces and stadiums and original artificial turf. And I think that the technology um, has gotten really good. I, I, I like our product. Um, I, again, I think it's a case by case issue. Um, and, and I understand that, uh, you know, 
we, we, we need to do everything that we can to keep our players safe and understand that, you know, sometimes, um, you know, injuries are unavoidable based on, you know, whatever you're doing and, and playing professional sports. How's the process, Mike, gone from kind of turning the page and getting ready for a, a good opponent? Well, I think it was good. I think the energy's been good. I hope we come out and practice well. Um, I think that's where it starts, you know, is, is, is eliminating mistakes, improving. You know, we've talked about the progress that you have to make in this league in order to be successful um, early in the season, midway through, and, you know, certainly late. You know, the, the teams that continue to improve are the ones that, that play uh, late in the year. So we're, we're always going to be focusing on improving and obviously, uh, you know, focusing on eliminating mistakes that give us a chance to win. As you turn that page towards this next game, what is it that makes you feel that, that Ryan Tannehill can bounce back to what you've seen from him before? Well, Ryan's played, you know, good football for us. You know, when we've been able to protect and I'm confident that they'll hit He'll hit the ones that, that we're supposed to hit and eliminate the mistakes and not not feeling like we have to force the ball. We'll have to protect them and you know, we'll have to stay efficient. You know, we'll have to that's a big key for us is making sure that, you know, we're not getting those disadvantaged uh, down in distances, first and fifteen, first and twenty. You know, even looking at our game last year, you know, when we were able to stay on track, we we're able to move the ball and stay out of third and long against a very good defense good scheme, good players. Uh, but the times where we start off first and 20, first play of the game, you know, self-inflicted wounds. How much of those just the Ryan's throws that were not made to look just like maybe some of those out passes and some of the timing? Yeah, we're, 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 we're going to focus on here the Chargers. And, uh, you know, we we'll, we'll had an opportunity Monday to, to talk about it. Um, but really um, – you know, we all know that the, you know, we'll have to get better quarterback play from Ryan and, and, and going, you know, moving forward. He knows that. You know, that's not a secret to anybody. When stuff opens on the backside on a pass play, are there situations where the play call just makes it so that it's not possible to, to get there? I, can you give me a specific example? I just don't want to speak in generalities and then get quoted. It looked like they busted coverage on Burks on the other side of the field. I've, I've referenced that, right? That's, you know, when you go a yes or no, when you go to the back side, you know, you go to the receiver, the single receiver, and you're, you're picking a side and um, don't hate the decision. You know, it's single coverage, I think, and so we just underthrow it. You know, don't give them a chance. I, I didn't like the, the execution. But, yeah, there is going to be a side that you're going to start to and progress and uh, certainly – you know, trailing came out of the bunch um, free, you know, and so that's, you know, wish we just started over there looking at hindsight, but you know, there's a lot of single receiver X's in this league and, you know, Hops caught a lot of passes over there. So there's a lot of other X's uh, in this league in, in the backside of three by one. So um, don't hate the decision, you know, the execution's got to be better. So it, depend, it depends on the set and the play as to whether if something breaks free on the backside, you have a chance. He, he's made up, you know, most of these times. And in that specific example, Brian, you know, he's made up his mind that he's going over there. Um, and, and, you know, if there's a concept that we're working to the bunch side, um, then, then we would certainly have expected him to see it. But that, that happens. I understand that. How much do you have to alert your DBs that Herbert's the type of quarterback who can make throws and will make throws that other quarterbacks might not attempt? Well, the arm talent, um, play strength. Going in either direction, being able to move the ball downfield, but he just, you know, he also knows where his outlets are. Everett and Neckler do a great job. Um, you know, he's decisive with the football; doesn't hold on to it um, real long. He knows where those checkdowns are. So, you know, we we just have to make sure that we're we're, we're tight, you know, and that we're we're forcing him to kind of progress through. What did you guys do well last year against them to keep him out of the end zone and have some success in the secondary? Um, well, I mean, I think that we were able to, to get lined up in the times that, you know, they were moving fast. We, we forced them, you know, to throw the ball underneath. I thought we tackled okay. We didn't give up a, a ton of big plays. You know, there were a few, but, um, you know, this, it'll be a different game. You know, we'll have to be ready for, for some tempo. It was successful for them last, last week, scoring on five of the six drives that they went fast and, 
you know, got into the red zone and they got on the ball. And so I'm sure they'll have a plan for us. And, you know, maybe some of those plays are similar. Some of them will probably be different. You guys played this team relatively recently, but obviously they've changed offensive coordinators. Kellen Moore now in charge. What kind of a uh, challenge does he present as a, as a Well, they ran a lot of snaps. They, you know, they, they ran 76 snaps. And, um, you know, there's always a you know, run-pass conflict if he, you know, Likes his numbers outside. They'll they'll throw it out there and the re- relief passes, um, the the tempo, um, certainly being able to mix personnel and and getting everybody involved. You know, he was able to spread the ball around. Had had some scheme plays for for some of the guys. Uh, take advantage of some of their skill sets. Um, you know, and there's also some things that showed up again that that Herbert must have liked or you know somebody there liked. Um, Coach Staley liked because some of the things that they ran against us uh, last year showed up in the first week. Austin Eckler, I mentioned, you, you know, a new dedication to the rushing attack, and you see what they're able to do with he and Josh Kelly. What, what do you make of, you know, how things have have shifted just in that one game that you got to see? Well, they ran hard. They blocked well. Um, you know, and if you're going to play them in, in split safety defense, you you better get off a block and and make a tackle and. Fill and, and fit, and uh, you know that's the battle you wage. They ran the ball nine of the first fourteen plays, and, and ran it three times inside the ten yard line. So I told the team today. So you know, certainly they want to stay balanced um, and, and run the football. Uh, ran it forty times. Mike, when it comes to Derrick Henry's usage, is there kind of a plan before the game about how much you want to make sure Derek plays or how many times he wants to get it or is it adjustments throughout the game that end up with how much Derek plays and how much he gets it I think that's probably goes by the game and in a feel for for what we think you know and how things are going you know I think we want to make sure that you know guys are getting the ball or, you know Derek at the top of that list and, and Hop and Traylon and Chig and Tajay. So, you know, trying to, to create opportunities for them and then see how it goes. Uh, you know, just like the screen to Derek is something that we've always had and, you know, that, that's been a good play for us. So making sure that we, you know, get some of those things called that we've had success with, um, you know, in the past. How willing do you have to be to give up routes or slow down people who run routes in order to chip Bosa and Mac? Um, you know, I mean, they just, you know, they chipped us. Saints started chipping us. And, um, you know, I still think that there's there's some ways that you can get those guys involved. I mean, they won't be at the, the normal depth, but, you know, it's going to take a group effort, you know, when you play some of these um, premier players uh, in, in the league uh, to try to make sure that, you know, we're, we're taking care of the quarterback. We're helping. Um, yeah. So this is having a plan for for where those guys go, and you know, being able to to help the quarterback and you know somewhere in the route after they do it. You know, making sure their first job is to to slow them down, and put them where you know the offensive line wants them to be, whether that's inside or making them run around, uh, and, but then having a, an opportunity to get into the route. So certainly not going to be it. 15 yards when they're into the route after they chip, but they'll be somewhere out there. How important are fundamentals and footwork towards making sure that you get better quarterback play this week? Um, fundamentals and footwork, I think everything we do is going to be about fundamentals, everything we want to focus on. Um, but it's also about you know, making great decisions, and letting the ball go, you know, having a few details. Like we talk about this all the time. Like, we got to take a, you know, cut a, a thin slice of, of what we're supposed to do, have a few details, and, and then go play when the ball snapped and not be indecisive or you know, waver. Whatever we did last week won't have any bearing. Whatever the Chargers did won't have any bearing on, on the game. And that's, uh, that's the facts. And things that you did last week, whether that's good and bad, you know, we have to understand that it's, you know, it's a whole new week, it's a new team, it's a new opportunity. Skill positions, the wide receiver, tight end position, big guys, big bodies. Yeah, what do you athletic. See from that well, I mean, they they you know, have a nice little package for him. Everett, um, you know, throw him a bubble for ten or twelve yards. He was involved in, you know, chipping some, and then he's involved in free release. And 
willing blocker, not not the biggest player, but I respect his willingness to to block, which he did. Helped him run for a lot of yards last week, so certainly respect that. Um, and then, you know, obviously Parham, just with the size um, matchup issues, it was clear that you know they'd be looking for him in the red zone. When a guy like Amani, who's been in the protocol before, goes back into it, does it? alter the, the baseline requirements or the process that he has to go through and, and required it to pass in order to return? Does it change? Uh, I think the, the protocol is, is what it is. It, you, you know, you know, symptom score, and when that's zero, uh, then you start to, the return to play and the conditioning and the weightlifting element and, you know, and then eventually practice and then an independent uh, – doctor so I don't think it changes to the best of my knowledge and so um, you know we'll keep monitoring him as he works his way through the protocol to be doing and then how, what are maybe some other options you will have to consider this well I, all I would say is that he's still in the protocol so that would tell you you know that you know he's not ready to get back out there uh, and the options I mean got Elijah, Mike Brown, all the guys that played for us in the preseason, Matt Jackson, and Shai uh, Carter on the practice squad. That would be that would be the options. How do you feel about Elijah in terms of back end versus – and so you're equally comfortable with him either spot? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think that, um, you know, his willingness to tackle um, and, and, again, was able to open up and show some range last week uh, back there. And they tried him. Uh, you know, him in and around the line of scrimmage has always been something that's been a skill of his, you know, a strength of his to to be able to, you know, whether they're throwing a bubble or he's fitting in on the run. They made a really nice play on a toss crack last week, and so, you know, as he you know, moves back, there's just a little bit more space, and that's why those those reps in training camp, you know, preseason, you know, were critical. Uh, for him to be able to see those things just from a little deeper. But um, you know, I think that the more he plays, you know, the, the better it will be. He's an instinctive football player. It's just been you know, keeping him out there. Does Christian have any lingering effects with the hamstring? Or do you expect him to be good to go? Uh, Christian will probably be somewhat limited today, uh, but hopeful to, uh, to return here shortly. So Traylon uh, has a personal matter, just to give you a heads up before you guys start, you know, looking at practice. But uh, you know, expect him back tomorrow. So just giving you guys a heads up. Thanks, Coach. Thanks, Thank you guys. Thanks, Appreciate it.